Lucky Boys Podcast. You do need to educate yourself, but yeah. at some point, you're, you're going to have to learn through failure. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because when I say that I'm a professional failure, I've made many, many mistakes in my career. I've made so many mistakes that I started seeing the mistakes two or three times over. And then that's when I realized, you know what, I can continue to be making this, these mistakes or I could stop it here and learn from it, right? So don't be afraid of failure. Just understand, don't bet so much that you can't afford to lose it. It's kind of like, you know how sometimes they have a saying, you know, when you lend money to a friend, mm. don't expect that it's going to come back. Mm. And yeah. if it does come back, great. If it doesn't, then you know what? You should have already expected it, right? So it's kind of like that. When you're making an investment play, always bet what you could afford to lose. In terms of failure, it's okay to um, lose the battle, but win the war. Live to fight another day, right? So how do you mitigate some of those losses? One thing that I learned over time is you could either learn through your own time and pay your way through, or you could learn from someone else. Kind of like going to school versus learning out in the street, right? So um, with that being said, on some of my investments that I go in on, I always understand what I know about the deal myself. And then I work with people that I'm not uh, in areas that I'm not good at. Like, for example, if some people are looking, oh, you know what? I've been hearing these things about foreclosures. I want to get into a foreclosure. I want to buy a house. I want to fix it up. I saw it on HGTV last night. It's so <laughs> easy. I want to get into one right now. Okay. <laughs> HGTV will have, him, will have you with so unrealistic right? expectations. Yeah. Right? Well, the thing is, they, they have other actual contractors that, that HGTV pays to, to renovate That's these a possibility, places. yeah. So it's not like... So at the end of the mind. day, you really want to partner up with people that are good at what you're not good at, right? But now it also comes down to business 101. Just because you can make money with someone doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to make money with someone. Why? Because at the end of the day, integrity comes first. Absolutely. Right? And that's, that's very difficult to find a business partner that has integrity, someone you can trust who's not going to, uh, who's going to cut you short so that they could eat more correct um and you know what you can't really hate uh the situation uh only because look this is just human nature right so at the end of the day if a human sees that there's maybe possible long-term gain in doing the long road then most likely they're gonna act that way if that's what they want right yeah. or if someone doesn't see anything long term and just needs that immediate gain right now then that person might be not might not be the best one for you, right? But you're probably not going to see that if they if that is their end game, they're going to do everything they can to disguise that. That's right, that's right. So the hardest part about this industry and this game and this business that I've learned for close to twenty years is finding the integrity in that person that you're surrounding yourself with or about to work with. I want to drill down on that. Sure. A uh, couple of things. Yeah. That's, how do you find that? What do you look at? What are some signs? Yeah, how do you identify those characteristics? So, um, I speak to about 300 people a month. Every single month for the past 10 years. I, I would like say, more, a I apologize, maybe like five or six years like hardcore, but I've been kind of building on that and honing in on, on specific traits, right? And one thing that I understand is a human being can pretty much have about 150 people that they can stay in touch with at any given time. And out of those 150 people, they have about 20 acquaintances that they like see and kind of still like definitely keep in touch and say hi and you can have a deeper conversation with. But out of those 20, there's also 10 that are really in your circle, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, what I learned when I was younger uh, was that joining, you know, an Asian interest fraternity or being a part of something bigger than I am, I always want to be included and try to be the person that fit in, right? And I realize that that is good because you want to try to please others. But at the end of the day, it kind of also hurts you because it gives you blinders where you don't see the real people and the fake people, right? So 
what I've come to learn over the years is whatever or whoever is around you, always try to see their actions or their, their motives behind certain things first before considering to put them in your inner circle. If what they say and what they do does not match, right. see, they, therefore, they, that's the red flag. Sure. Is that what you're saying? Sure. Um, usually, look, I also, you know, being on the uh, involved in these groups, the Chinese American Real Estate Association and ARIA, um, you do a lot of networking events. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, be on the board of directors, you have to get to know everyone right. inside that networking event that could be either 50 people or 500 people. Right. Right. And from my understanding, and this is just my experience and I could be wrong. People that come up to you and try to talk shop mm -hmm. right away mm -hmm. are generally the people that you want to stay away from. Are they which like is looking counter, for their next victim? Which is counterintuitive, is that why? Are right? They, are they looking for the That's next a possibility, dummy? right? It's a possibility. But it just means that they're there purely to just do business. So you're saying if someone just skips all the foreplay and just goes straight. Straight in. That's, that's a red flag. Uh, yes, it's a red flag for me only because... Be Okay, got it. Uh, based on my experience, nine times out of ten turns out to be a shark. Okay, mm -hmm. and I don't want to you know be. What? In the I, I, shark. I agree with that because uh, yeah. if, if if you look at it like these people are not concerned about building a relationship sure, first, exactly, and having someone else that has integrity. So for me, if you don't care about that, that tells me which which team you're playing for. Sure, and what's your what's your it's a possibility. That, that, yeah, that gives a big sign. Sure, if I don't go out to to, to get to know you and understand what you're about. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make money as fast as possible. I'm looking to take advantage of someone. Sure. So if someone does that to me, I'm, I, I could see the game right there. Right. Right. Uh, but I think people are way more charismatic these days. I think they're, they're a lot better at disguising their true agenda. Either they avoid it at all costs they kind of talk, you know, and they talk about a separate lane and they'll kind of let you talk it up and they'll smooth talk you into it, which I've seen a lot. Right. Um, or or they'll slowly plant the seed and let it grow. Sure. And they're then, patient. Yeah, they're, they're, very, patient they're, they're, they're very patient. So, I mean, I think, because I think what you're saying, mm -hmm. a lot of people are hip to that now. They know, for example, if I'm a shark, if, let's just say I'm a shark and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking... I'm looking for dummies at sure. these networking yep. events, mm -hmm. but I'm not a rookie shark. Yep. I've been, this is like, let's just say this is my 10th networking sure. event. And I could see now that when I'm trying to finesse someone mm -hmm. by going straight up, skipping foreplay, just, Hey, you want to fuck? You know, <laughs> like I'm skipping all that. I'm going, Hey, you want to fuck? Yeah. And it's not working. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go, Oh shit. Yo, you want to drink? Uh -huh. Hey, that's a that's a beautiful you know necklace you got oh yeah, yeah i love the way it looks on you and then you start talking and you start and then you're know, making each other laugh and get comfortable with each other oh, here's another drink boom sure right and then next thing you know i got your number and all right you have a good night it was nice meeting you goodbye sure. yeah and then you slow play it then you give a little text you know i i, I think a lot speaking in business sense mm -hmm. i think a lot of people are starting to realize that that's the way to play it so, yes and no. Uh, I, I would have to kind of disagree with that. And the reason why I say that is because, um, generally speaking, when you're dealing with a professional network, these people are out in it to win it and they want to make money and they need to make money quick, right? So to build that relationship over time, some, some of my best people that I work with, we don't do business for five years. And my man, if you can do the dance for five years with me, <laughs> you know what? You deserve it. You. You deserve Look, it. Then, then I'm an idiot <laughs> for not being able to read you, right? Because can you really hide yourself, your true self, for five years, mm -hmm. right? Where you've gone to f eating food together, getting drunk together, building that bond and saying, oh, man, we're boys, blah, blah, this and that, and going on trips together. You're going to see them slip one way or the other, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I've seen signs. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I've seen people that, you know, are where they try to stiff the uh, waiter for the bill. Mm -hmm. And this is after knowing them for a year, right? So that's when you kind of realize, that's when you start seeing, okay, well, if we're in a business deal together, how are they going to act with mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they're trying to sweet to or whatever. Look, at the end of the day, the reason why I'm so happy is because 
that 150 people, mm-hmm. the 20 people, the 10 close to me, okay. I've weeded everyone that's negative out. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's taken me a long time to build that. So let's let's talk yeah. about the other part, the the part two of 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 what I wanted to get at. Sure. Uh, how do we spot a deal? 